Welcome to the Kawartha Small Business Podcast, where we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small businesses. So we created a podcast where we have million-dollar conversations that help small business owners thrive. I'm Brian Rump from Profit Coach. And I'm Matt Garrity of Matt G Digital. And we are recording from the Thrive Podcast Studio at Thrive Coworking Community in downtown Lindsay, Ontario at 18 Kent Street West. And today we are talking about um, how do we identify the problems we need to solve for our customers. Um, This is something that I think we've talked about before, um, and I wanted to just put it back on the list because I think it's something that always deserves conversation and thinking through. Uh, I think there's a lot of experts who talk about it over and over and over again, Um, but we don't always do a good job of actually identifying the problems that we're solving, even though we tell everyone to, you know, pick a problem and solve it for your business. Well, I think that's what you hear all the time is the, point that you're supposed to find the problems and talk about it, but no one will really dig deeper than that or like actually teach you how to find the problems, which is interesting. Yeah. And I think too, sometimes people think they've, Mm. I'll see content sometimes where it's like, well, the problem is this. And I'm always thinking like, is it though? (laughs) And, and actually, is it though is kind of like an amazing question in this process Uh, because sometimes you have to like do those like thought experiments and really dig in to try to identify what it is people are looking for. It's funny because I always thought this was like a strength of mine too, where I can kind of dig through a lot of the baloney and figure out pretty simply to me what the problems are, but I don't really know why or how I got to that. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's... uh, Um, Like, I think it's, for me, a strength. And part of the strength is, like, not really knowing what to do. It's, Mm -hmm. like, one of these sort of magical things that happens when you put some thought to it. And you're not always right Mm -hmm. um, doing it. Or you can only do so much research. Um, But, you know, really figuring out what is the problem you're solving for people, I think, is so critical for any business especially small businesses because you can't waste time trying to solve like 10 problems. You got to solve really one. I've always found bad sales experiences come from people or salespeople addressing the money problem where I had this happen a couple times when we're doing launching thrive specifically and thrive is not meant to be bargain discount cheaply hacked together thrive is meant to be meticulously designed turnkey solution and i was trying to get this not super important now but like sweaters thrive sweaters was there something else hats sweaters specifically and i was extremely clear in my email I'm interested in like good quality stuff. I don't want to wear this because it has my brand name on it. I want to wear it because it's comfortable and it's stylish. And the person came back to me right away. And like, then the first sentence was like, this is your cheapest option, blah, blah, blah. And I just was beside myself mad. I was like, you are not listening to my situation. I don't have a money problem. I'm not looking for the cheapest thing. I never said that. I talked about quality and comfort and style. Yeah. And now you just think I'm looking for the cheapest option. And that drove me nuts. The other one was with internet also. Oh yeah. You've told this story. This, it, it drives me, it drove me bonkers where I reached out to the internet provider and I was like, this is what we're doing at Thrive. There's, eight private offices, there's a shared space, there is a boardroom. So at any given time, like you could be looking at 50 people using multiple devices, 20 to 50 people, really, whatever. And they came back right away. They're like, based on your situation and cost, they said like cost in the first sentence, you should get this package. And I replied back, 
is this the most internet that I can get? I don't know anything technical. People think I am a digital marketer and I know how to fix computers and fix email and all this. I have no idea. I was like, is this the most internet I can get? And they were replying like, oh, well, no, there's a bigger package, but I just figured based on price. I'm like, I never gave you a price. I never gave you a budget. I need the most amount of internet that you have and I need it to work all the time. They're like, oh, we'll, we'll put you up in this package. So I'm like, is that the most internet I can get? And they're like, yes. I'm like, perfect. Sign me up. That's all I asked yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, I think there's the listening to what people are saying, what they're asking for. Sometimes there's like, you know, you can look at what people are hacking as well to figure it out, but then identify what is the problem. So in that, those cases, people assumed one of your problem was limited money or they've been so badgered by yeah. people complaining about costs. And they're like, well, this is your cheapest option. And it's like, yeah, my, the goal wasn't to find a cheap thing. It was, you know, to create something that, you know, fits my brand. So, you know, maybe it's something that's really expensive because you want it to look stylish, maybe look expensive could be a thing that you have. Um, and, you know, the brand is just an added bonus. Uh, but it's not assuming what people's problems are. It's like digging in and asking. And then if you can solve the problem, solve it. If you can't, that might be another business that solves it. Or it might be a tweak you need to make to your business. And this story I'm about to tell in a second is not critical of her. But remember, like, we had Jen from the Sweet Kitchen on here. And you and I were sitting down with her, talking to her about transitioning from home baker to having a storefront. And she was talking about like the concern of like, she already had to be upping her costs and everything. And I told her like, I was someone that went to the market every Saturday and I would buy her stuff. I had no idea what a, a bar cost, not a clue in the world. So if she raised the cost week over week, I would have no idea. But that's not the problem she's trying to solve. She's not trying to solve the cheapest baked good locally. If someone wants something cheap, cheaper than her, or just cheap in general, they're going to go to the grocery store. Yeah. They're going to go pick up donuts at the um, hockey player's coffee place, right? Um, they're not going to go to the sweet kitchen. If you want beautifully made baked goods by a professional baker to – impress your friends and family and you are going to be the hero of wherever you bring those to that's where you go that's the problem she's trying to solve oh yeah. she's not even trying to solve the problem like oh like i'm hungry i want a treat like no you do this you just said this morning to me like you went to the sweet kitchen last week to impress someone that you were working with to have a meeting with them and you also kind of wanted to show off these treats that thrive so people can share them like that's what you do you you go to the sweet kitchen yeah. so you're the hero of wherever you bring those yeah it's true like i go i don't look at the price no idea. i pick out like a bunch of things yeah <laughs> and usually i there are things i want to try and then i bring them back to thrive and then i cut a piece off each one on a little plate for me so i can have a bite of each of the magic that she creates and then the rest is for people around here and whether that is uh, $3.75 or $300.95 doesn't matter to me um, because the problem I'm solving is making people happy. You know, it's delighting myself by trying different things, you know, and that's a different problem than somebody else. Yeah, and the reason why we keep you around here. My, uh, my, my favorite example of the problems to solve and what makes me use that language is from uh, I believe it Peter Drucker who was a Harvard professor and passed away so they were talking about some of his most famous things and one of them was a study he did with McDonald's mm. to try to sell more milkshakes mm. so they did a big study as to why people were buying milkshakes so they would go up and talk to them and observe them and check their you know times of day and, you know, not to draw it out too much, but the reason people buy milkshakes is essentially to, like, kill time or entertain themselves. So people would, one of their biggest times to sell was commute times in the morning. 
So people would like roll through the drive through in the morning, buy a milkshake. Who's drinking a milkshake in the morning? A lot Anybody. of people. <laughs> so we might not see that in Lindsay, but people who are, you know, this was, you know, in the U.S. So if you've got like an hour commute to the office. Wow. Yeah. The milkshake keeps you awake, keeps you company because you're slowly drinking it. So there are. Um, what they did was they developed thicker milkshakes because thicker milkshakes last longer. So it wasn't about how good is the flavor. It's about how thick is it because it will last longer. And I see this That's when I is. drive. I'm like, oh, I love, like, if I'm driving home at night from something in the city, I will stop and get a milkshake. And I'm like, yeah, it's because I, like, slowly <laughs> sip on it on the way home. So the problem to solve was that sort of keeping some company on their commute time. It wasn't that I needed a hit of sugar or I was looking for a healthy something. It's like, what is the problem that you are solving? And if you solve it, people will, will buy it. That's awesome. I never in a million years thought that that was a thing with milkshakes. I love milkshakes. I'll eat them if I'm eating like at Apollo Grill type of thing yeah. or like a – a spot like that. I've never thought about a milkshake for travel, but I do travel drinks and snacks often. Yeah. Like to me, anytime I'm going down to Durham or Toronto, it's like stop and get probably a coffee or a snack or gas stations are like, Oh great. I'm kind of bored. And yeah, gas stations know it. Here's what the problems were solving, right? Like we're bored or they're like, Hey, just pump gas. I deserve a treat. This makes perfect sense now. I never thought about this because, like, you go to a gas station, they have the best selection of snacks yeah. in the world, right? You can't get that at a uh, pharmacy or, like, a grocery store or some of these little even pop-in places. Even, like, a convenience store is not as good as a gas station. The gas station has every single snack you could ever want there and the best selection of pop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because it's like people are like, oh, I don't really snack that much. And then it's like, oh, then why does the gas station sell so many great snacks? And that's also the like, not just listening to what people say they want. You know, my other favorite with this and back to like McDonald's is everyone's like, oh, I eat really healthy. I don't really eat fast food. Yet McDonald's yeah. <laughs> stuff soars. And like, and people will be like, oh, I want to eat healthier. I always say people really wanted to eat healthier all the time. McDonald's would adapt and you could buy the healthiest thing ever, but they don't for whatever reason, you know, different things, but like the problems they're solving are, you know, related to um, that. It's funny because you hear so many people complain, oh, it's so hard to find quote healthy things to eat that are convenient for you. And it's not, because that it's because like there's not actually that problem and really <laughs> people don't buy them now there is some neat like behavioral economics nudge stuff where how you present food mm. in certain like settings might encourage people to buy the healthier thing a little bit more but in general it's you know adapting to what people actually do which helps us dig into you know the problem to be solved hockey player donut place lined up every day people you know just you know to me the problem is they hate their job they need to numb themselves a bit so they roll through the drive through and you know get that thing that's helping them just get through their day so the problem is kind of unhappiness uh, and i say this when i laugh but also for me personally if i find myself going through that drive through in the mornings it's always an underlying sign of like overstressed not sleeping you know the happier i am the least i'm going through i haven't been through that one in <laughs> years right um i was probably with you last time we yeah. did it on the way back from money's <laughs> i'm thinking anytime i go and i eat fast food i am honestly i'm not as critical about fast food as other people but oh, it, it has a place. I like I go to McDonald's because sometimes I like McDonald's. Their breakfast is so good. I ate it on Mother's Day, and I like oh, I didn't take your wife out for a nice breakfast, but like 
we didn't want to go out and spend a whole bunch because we'd been out her and I the night before and Friday night we do like pizza and wings and stuff with the kids. But I was <laughs> playing poorly, um, which goes back to what I was about to say. Sorry, when I'll get to that first, which is like if I'm in one of those drive throughs and I'm getting fast food, it's because I've broken routine. I've overslept or I'm not doing what I normally should have. So like, okay, I, I got to eat. And I got to eat it now. So uh, they're there to help you solve that problem. Absolutely. So like Sunday morning we wake up, we've run out of eggs because not gender role stuff, but like my wife does the groceries every week. She didn't get a chance to do the groceries. It was a beautiful weekend. We're outside. We didn't want to leave that. So like we're out of eggs, which never happens. We have no bacon in the house, which is a first world problem. Um, and then... <laughs> Uh, no hash browns. So I just said, I'm like, let's just go out for breakfast. And she's like, oh, I don't want to spend all this money. We go to McDonald's. It's delicious. Um, it costs like a fraction of what it would cost if we sat down for breakfast. And the kids like in the play place, they're running around having a great time. She got to sit down and drink coffee and quiet. It, it was fantastic. But that's what like both of those reasons I just said, like, they're all about routine. Like we got out of routine. We didn't get the groceries when we should have. So we had to pivot and that's where we ended up. And honestly, everyone was happy. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great reason it's there in a business that understands those different problems. And they're yeah. always open. You always know they're going to be open. They're yeah. always going to have food. You don't have to think like, Oh, is it Sunday? Are they open? I've been shocked since day one when I moved up here my wife and me are always big breakfast people traditionally. Like we, when we started dating, we would always go out for breakfast, like on Sunday morning and stuff. So like we're, breakfast is a thing for us. Um, when we moved up here, breakfast places weren't open until like eight or nine, which for a lot of people sounds like kind of early even, but like we had kids, those kids are up at six o'clock. Yeah. Like we're like, okay, let's go for breakfast. It's like seven o'clock. Like we got to get out of the house. Nothing's open until which is wild. You go to McDonald's, it's open and they're serving and the food is great. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it really interesting um, culturally for that of like, cause I think here we don't have a lot of shift work and in communities where there's more active, I think shift work places are open like at five or six in the morning. That's my own. Oh, theory. that's a good point though. Cause I also, I grew up near Belleville for one. Yeah. Like the truck stop was open all the time. So yeah. other places would be open. Like I was same thing. I always used to going out early. I love, I yeah. love like rolling into a breakfast place at like six 30 is like oh, yeah. one of my favorite things. But yeah, it's, here I'm always waiting for places to open. And then I, I don't. That's when you break a habit. Like if you want the habit of going and to breakfast and it has to suit someone else's schedule, this doesn't work for you. Yeah. But yeah, when we look at the problems, this is, I'm glad you, we linked it into restaurants because I think, you know, the problem restaurants solve is rarely people are hungry, right? Yeah. If you're hungry and out of routine, you know, McDonald's has solved that problem for you. Yeah. Um, or if it's fast. If it's I, true. If I go to a sit down restaurant, I'm solving a different problem. So maybe it's a date night with a spouse it's lunch with a business associate the problem is we want a nice place to have a conversation yeah the problem is we want to try a new cocktail that's yeah. interesting the problem could be for some it's like we just want to drink a bunch of cheap booze <laughs> like and when you design your business around knowing what that is you know you curate who your clients are and who's coming so if it's like hey we got two dollar beers on tuesday nights then the problem is you want people who want to have 10 $2 beers. That's a business. I don't think that's a price that actually exists um, anymore. If it's like a nice restaurant where you connect with friends that you don't see often or like pub night with your friends, these are all different things. And I think to me, it's reasons to open a business and differentiate. This is why I get so worked up when I'll see like a nice restaurant be like, Hey, don't feel like cooking tonight. Oh God. Here's, you know, here's um, some takeout you can have. And it's like, well, I get it. But like the problem isn't that I don't feel like cooking that you solve, right? Like you solve my special night out 
or my celebration night, not my, I just don't really feel like cooking. Like usually if I'm tired, don't feel like cooking, I'm looking to solve a different problem and I'm probably not solving it with like five star food. It's true. And like, I'm going to be super careful here because I want to compliment this place, but I went to a restaurant in Lindsay on Saturday night and with my wife, we go once a month, her and I for dinner type of thing, maybe. And it was, it's all about experience for us. It's about good food. So there's, but I think that's part of the experience. Um, We went, it was great. You've been there. I'll tell you about it after. Um, but on my way in, they have a big sign. It's like um, they're on uh, DoorDash. And I honestly was like, why on earth would you ever DoorDash this? The food is great. It is amazing. I love the food. I had one of the best appetizers of this type of food. I don't want like, to say anything negative like we talked about. But like, I, the appetizer I had was the best of this I had ever had. Hands down. And then the entree was great. My wife thought hers was amazing. But I was like, I'm not ever on a Friday night or middle of the week or whenever. Like, man, I'm so hungry. And this is the food that I have to eat. To me, it's I need to go here. It is beautiful there. And the service is good. It's great and lively. And the food is great. And that's part of it because otherwise I wouldn't go there. But um, it's just, it's not. It's not a solution. It's not a problem. I don't think it's not a problem that exists right now. But. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, and then if you, if it is, say that place wants to DoorDash. I've some places have limited menus where it's like we cook amazing things. Some of it doesn't travel well, but here's what does travel well, and yeah. we packaged it right, so that if you want to have a great dinner at home because you have a baby and can't go out, fair. Sure, Here, that's a great. We create great. this for you, yeah. right? And again, it's thinking through what those problems are, and then where to put your resources. Now, I think about in the pandemic, uh, Jen Egg, who's um, she has a book called "I Hear She's a Real Bitch." And she uh, owns uh, restaurants in Toronto. Okay. So the reason we all like charcuterie mm. is because she was one of the first like charcuterie board places oh wow. uh, in uh, called i think it was the was it the black hoof uh, that's now they've changed mm-hmm. what it is in toronto but like um in the pandemic created things like that that was specific for here's what we can do well take it uh, she had another article before about so let them eat their soggy fries because she for a while refused to like send uh, french fries with uh takeout because i was like no they need to be eaten in my restaurant when they're perfect because we make them perfect that's the whole point of the restaurant i love this uh, <laughs> but then great. finally she relented it was like hey if people want them soggy they can have them soggy she just didn't like love it but to me at least talking about that was good it's like oh you're not promising they're going to be great because you're going to throw them in a box and they're going to steam themselves soggy yeah but it's knowing what what it is you're solving so is it a night home to connect and people want some good food with it is it an you know there's places i go where i'm like i want an amazing cocktail yeah and i don't care how much money it costs like mm-hmm. other times it's like you're just looking for you know a um like chip truck type of place where it's like, I want amazing French fries and maybe something else. That's the problem you are solving for whatever, you know, reason it is. So when you really think about that in any business is the same. It's like, what is the problem and trying to get to the heart of it and not in a marketing flashy way. I think I resisted a lot of this for a long time because there's like, sort of consultants or people who come and then they like punch up the language and they make these big elaborate, like, oh, we solved the problem of not being able to holistically connect with synergies. And you're like, I don't know what that means. Innovation. But when you're like, when it's the true innovation of like Peter Drucker, who's like the granddaddy, where it's like, actually this milkshake's keeping some company. Like that's, that's a good line too. Right? <laughs> like, but finding out what that is. 
um, for your business. Yeah, and I guess that's what we kind of do with the story brand framework stuff that you and I do. I love that part. It like might be my favorite part of oh, the I whole think... marketing experience I do now is like sitting down with people, figuring out like who it is that's buying from you, what are their problems. I love that. Yeah, I think it's to me why I, why I've gravitated and gone kind of all in on using the story to create businesses is because it is about identifying what that problem is and trying to like at least narrow in on it. I'll give an example. My profit coach, the problem I solve is getting money for businesses, which at first I didn't like. It sounded weird. Like, Hey, I get money. But when people hear that, that's really what they want. They don't want me to like turn their passion into profit. They want me to get them money (laughs) and we have some tools to do it. And I've learned the people I work best with, they want to be the ones to do it. Mm-hmm. So I have to give them the bridge or the tool or the help to do the thing, not just be like, hey, here's this thing you have to do because you're in my program now and you have to do it. So the problem is people are they are people who like to work and building their business and they need to know what to do to get themselves more money. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I'm narrowing around versus – thinking too far this is interesting sorry i'm now thinking about like just it's so true like business owners like we all have egos i don't want to be told what to do i want you to convince me of an idea and i kind of come up with it yeah to follow it right but i'm just thinking how do i do that for marketing now anyway well everyone's different because some people they want the plug and play system and i think part of it's in how you um it's how you position yourself. And then for me, it's like knowing where to stop. Cause I used to always be like, well, I want to help everyone and I can yeah. help everyone. But now it's like, I can't help the, you know, there's people who want the coach or consultant who's just going to make their business so that they can sit on a beach and not have to worry about it. But everyone I work best with, they actually want to work in their business. They just don't want to be overwhelmed by the stuff they're not good at. That's so, brilliantly said. Yeah. So, like, I want to give them the thing that helps them build their business that yeah. they want versus being like, well, I'm going to turn your business into something you can run from the beach. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to run my business from the beach. Like, <laughs> part of the joy is, <laughs> you know, I know for you and, like, SEO stuff, it's like, I want to learn what works. It's like a game, right? Like, you got to be in the game to play it. If you took a, If you took six months off, you'd come back and, like, everything would probably change and you'd have to like get up to speed on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It would be, um, yeah, you don't want to work. I don't think business owners as much as they want to work from the beach or like sit on the beach, like they maybe want to change the scenery and they want to be able to, they like the option of being able to they want to go on vacation with their kids a couple times a year. Yeah. I know. I just spoke to a business owner yesterday too, that, um, her busy time, like I guess is in the summertime. And I was like, how are things going? She's like, great. Better than ever. Uh, I just took two weeks off in August and I'm like really nervous. And like, we're recording this in May. And she's like, I've never taken this time off before. And I was like, it just doesn't sound like an enjoyable thing to be stressed about. Right. Like to be able to not be able to build your business that way. It's just, Anyways, everyone's got their own takes on it, but like no business owner really just wants to like start something and completely disappear from it. Yeah. Right. Like there's a reason why we started this on our own. Like we thought that we could do it better than other people. Doesn't mean we're going to just completely disappear from it. So. Oh, definitely. And I think it's figuring that out in the process of always think about what's the problem. What's the problem. There's a great, um, you know, a common sort of innovation like exercise people do is they'll say like, well, people don't want, um, you know, a drill. What they really want is a hole. And I always am like, well, take it a bit further. I was like, what they really want is to stare at a painting that makes them happy. (laughs) Right. It's like you you need all of those things, but you know, if you're digging in it and thinking about it and then you can figure out what is the problem that you are the best in the world at solving, Mm -hmm and then build your business out from that, you're going to have a lot more success and be a lot happier if you're focusing 
yeah for sure on that so um, yeah that's my sort of talking about the problems to solve how to do it is really through like thinking and questions sometimes it's changing your scenery it's watching your customers it's figuring out what they are hacking and above all of those and i didn't plan on saying this but you need to have the time to do those things mm -hmm. so you need to be implementing some systems and frameworks so that you can be having that capacity to observe what those people are doing so you can come up with the next problem to solve yeah i guess maybe one of the biggest problems business owners face is being in the trenches so much they don't actually get a chance to do what they're best at which is navigate the business yeah. like as a coach from the outside versus the guy running the play all the time or even just seeing how good they're doing at it like sure. some i know some people are so good at what they do but they're just always in it and they don't think they don't realize how good they are mm -hmm. and if they just pull back and watch they might be able to do what they're doing better mm -hmm. or adjust it a little bit so yeah you know you need to do all of those things all the things it never <laughs> really uh shuts off but it's a, a way to keep thinking so yeah awesome what uh what do you want the people to know about and how do they find you marketing is trying to solve two problems one of which is that not enough people know that you exist um, your business does not have enough people that know it exists and i can help you fix that by getting found on google in less than 60 days just go to my website to book a call at managedigital.com Awesome. I am a business coach that gets your business money. Um, and we do that with grants, increased sales, and streamlining your business for profit. You can find me at profitcoach.ca. Uh, Matt and I want to collaborate to help you launch, grow, or recharge your business. And we are here to help. If you want to discuss working with us or to be a guest on the podcast, send us an email to set it up at coorthasmallbusinesspodcast.ca. And remember, we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small businesses.